Today I want to show you a free rail diamond kicking system. Well, this is the first system that I've actually learned when I started playing seriously. It's very easy to understand and to apply. I assume most players already know that system, but I'm also sure that beginners and even some average players haven't heard about it. Just a few indications. In this system we have three reference shots or lines that I will show you first and then I'm showing you how to easily apply if the cue ball is not on these reference lines. So let's start. Reference line number one. We assume the cue ball is somewhere on the line that is drawn from the corner pocket to this diamond. All we have to do now is to play the cue ball exactly towards the diamond with high left. It's very important that you play every single shot in this system with high left in order to work. And if we're doing that, the cue ball should travel exactly along this path and will drop into the corner pocket. And as you may notice, the cue ball will on its way hit the rail very near to these diamonds and then go exactly towards the corner pocket. So let's have a look. So the cue ball is on the right line and I am aiming exactly towards the second diamond. Remember, play the shot with high left. And as you see, I'm making the ball, but the cue ball hit the long rail. So I'm double checking to see whether it's the fault of the table or if I did something wrong. And I hit the exact same spot on the long rail. And that's because every table plays different of course. Usually aiming towards the second diamond works on most of the tables. But depending if the cloth is very new or very old, or the rails are harder or softer, I have to adjust just a little bit. So here I determined that this table plays a little short and that's why I'm adjusting by aiming just one inch next to the diamond. And as you see, the cue ball is now heading exactly towards the corner pocket. Reference line number 2. We assume that the cue ball is somewhere on the line that is drawn from the corner pocket to this diamond. And all we have to do now is to play the cue ball exactly towards the diamond, remember with high left. And if we're doing that, the cue ball should travel exactly along this path and will hit the rail at this diamond. And as you may notice, the cue ball will now on its way hit the rail very near to these diamonds. And then finally at the last diamond. So let's have a look. So the cue ball is on the right line and I'm exactly aiming towards the third diamond. Remember play the shot with high left. And as you see, I hit the long rail too early and that's because I forgot to adjust for the table. Because on reference shot number 1, we saw that this table plays a little short. So I am adjusting and I not only hit the 5 ball, but also made it. Reference line number 3. We assume that the cue ball is somewhere on the line that is drawn from the corner pocket to this diamond. All we have to do now is to play the cue ball exactly towards the diamond, remember with high left. And if we're doing that, the cue ball should travel exactly along this path and will hit the rail not at this diamond, but exactly between these two diamonds. And that's because the cue ball will now travel to this imaginary diamond if we extended the table, and therefore will hit the rail at half a diamond. So let's have a look. So the cue ball is on the right line and I am aiming exactly towards the third diamond. Remember, play the shot with high left. And this time I am not making the ball, but I came very close. I am showing you this attempt because of course I just can't promise that you will every time make the ball when using the system. That's just not possible, but you have a very good chance of course. Before I am showing you how to adjust if the cue ball is not on that line, let's summarize real quick what we've learned so far. If the cue ball is somewhere on this line, I am aiming towards this diamond and the cue ball will hit the rail at this diamond. If the cue ball is somewhere on this line and I am hitting towards this diamond, the cue ball will travel to the next diamond and will go into the corner pocket. And if the cue ball is somewhere on this line, I am hitting towards this diamond, the cue ball will travel to the next diamond and will hit the short rail at half a diamond. 
Of course the cue ball won't always be on one of these lines, but to adjust this is very simple. Let's place the cue ball at a random place and an object ball that is hanging in the pocket. And now I'm using reference line number 1, because that line brings me towards the corner pocket. I now just have to move that line until it's over the cue ball. And now I'm looking for the line that is exactly between those two. And where this line hits the rail is my target where I'm shooting the cue ball. This is the line that the cue ball will travel. And now comes a very interesting part. If we compare this line with the line of the cue ball on reference line number 1, we see that the cue ball will actually travel the same path towards the end. And that's because if we hit a lot of rails with running side, the angles are self-correcting. That's the same principle by the way that happened in Chris Melling's famous 4 rail shot. I don't say that this shot is easy, but I saw a few people recreating the run and the easiest shot to recreate was actually this 4 rail because of the self-correcting angles. But now let's get back to our topic. This is reference line number 1. Now I'm using my Q stick to move that line. And now I'm moving my cue stick exactly centered between those two lines. I extend the line until I hit the rail. And this is my aiming point. So now the object ball is not hanging on the pocket, so I'm using reference line number 3. I'm aiming towards that diamond and move my cue stick halfway. I imagine the line, adjust for the table and I have determined this point on the table to hit. I hit the cue ball with high left and I made the 5 ball. And in the last example, of course I use reference line number 2 because the object ball is next to this diamond. Again, I'm doing the same thing adjusting a little bit and manage to make the ball with rail first. The object ball of course won't always be exactly on one of those spots that I was showing you. So if the object ball for example is at half a diamond at the long rail, I am neither using reference line number 1 no reference line number 2. I'm using the line that is exactly between those two, because this line will bring me half a diamond to the short rail of course, so you can easily adjust depending where the object ball is placed. And the object ball also won't be exactly on a rail all the time. Making the object ball then becomes harder, but hitting it is still a very doable task. I know, if I'm using reference line number 2, the cue ball will travel from this diamond to this diamond, and I have a very good chance to hit the ball. You just have to study where the cue ball will hit the other two rails when playing different lines from different angles. A few hints at the end. If you want to make more balls using the system, you need to be able to play a repeatable shot. If you're giving too much or too less spin, or hit too hard or too low, the path of the cue ball will of course change. But if you figure the behavior of the table out, Remember, we did that with the cue ball on reference line number 1 and if you can play the same shot again, this system is very reliable. You will make a lot of balls and it's almost impossible to not hit the object ball. So if you have any questions about the system, just let me know in the comments. I will give my best to make things clear for you. If you enjoyed this lesson and got value out of it, hit the like button and consider to subscribe to my channel or leave a comment. Thanks for watching and thanks to all of my patrons and subscribers and we'll see us at the next lesson. Take care.